hey what's going on in this tutorial we're going to be going over the basics of uh, optimizing your images for the web now there are three basic things that dictate the size the file size of your graphic alright and that's what we're going to start with the first thing is the actual size of the file now here I have fireworks CS um, 5 this is 5.1 here and um, this is a great way to optimize your images um, using fireworks I love it it's the easiest way I found to do it it's a little button right there you click optimize but we'll get to that in a second the first thing that we're gonna look at is this right here this is the beginning file size of our graphic this is the file type this number right here is the load time the estimated load time that it would take for a graphic like this one to load in the browser using dial-up 56k is dial-up 288 56k those are dial-up you get up to like 128 that's considered high speed um, so I set mine for dial-up that's the default over here you see the actual file size which is the first thing that you're gonna need to address when you're dealing with graphics on the web how big should your actual graphic be well it depends on your actual needs um, if you're building uh, a background like you might use this as a background to your website it's very beautiful you might throw it in the background and put some content over the top but look at the size of that graphic we'd still would need to do some optimizing to get it as small as we possibly can before we upload it to our site because that's going to affect our bandwidth and uh, you can go to our site and look up bandwidth on our site and you'll get more information on that but that'll affect your bandwidth and that'll run up some numbers right there not only that but your load time 133 seconds that's over two minutes who the heck is gonna sit there and wait for this to load and it's gonna take two minutes now that doesn't even count um, the fact that you're probably gonna have other graphics or pictures or videos and audio playing on your site the last thing you need is 133 seconds for this and another element might take another 20 seconds 10 seconds here get everything as small as you can is my basic um, advice for you we're gonna talk about how to do that the second thing oh excuse me right here you're gonna see this number right here this is I'm sorry about that this is the actual size of the graphic 1024 by 768 now I'm going to show you how we can change that in fireworks very quickly very easily but this like I said is typically good for a background not good for your regular image how big should those images be depends on your needs I would say if you need like a main image for say a blog post I keep it at like uh, maybe like 300 by about 150 somewhere in there a little bit bigger maybe 400 depending on the page size of um, whatever it is that you're using but never any bigger than 425 I don't see you really needing anything with the width of more than 425 okay so now that I've told you that I'm gonna show you how we can quickly and easily change the size of this graphic now as you can see when I hover over this graphic this guy was thrown in later now there's two things you can do to change the size of this graphic first thing we say is this do I need all this dirt at the bottom um, is there a main part of this that I want to keep or do I want the whole thing like it's really nice but do I really need all that or do I need all this up here do I need all that sky maybe I just want to have this view if that's the case you can come right over here and you can use the crop tool to select a portion of it and just for this tutorial I'm going to crop a piece of this out and uh, I'll just say I don't need all this dirt I don't like all that dirt I just want this right here that's what I want people to see let me make this a little bit smaller so we can Oops. let me make this a little smaller so we can get it into the picture there we go so now I'm gonna crop this using the crop tool I'm just gonna take that take that portion push enter bam 
just cut all of that off now we're gonna preview and as you can see look what happened significant difference we basically cut it in half okay and um, that's basically making the graphics smaller very important that like I said if you don't need all that don't use all that just crop it now the size I dropped the um, magnification level but the actual size is still 1024 across if that's not the size of your web page then you would crop more of it off so cropping is an effective way to drop your page size if you don't need all of that in your graphic the next way of course is very simple you can actually change the canvas size or image size of your document now the reason you might change the canvas size let's start there real quick I got this locked let me unlock that now let's say that you let now when you crop it automatically cuts off the extra part it's like putting it through a, a paper cutter but let's say that you only had this much left okay and you got all this canvas here well that canvas is be, is eating up space so you could use the fit to canvas option here that would actually shrink this and I'll show you what it looks like it just shrink it down to the size of the image so that's another way that you can as you can see again almost cut it uh, no actually we only lost a little bit there but every little bit counts when you're loading that page going back to the original view okay um, we have another oops one other option obviously like I said you may want to just change the entire size of this graphic to do that all you do is click the image size button down here click that and you want to constrain the proportions usually which basically means that as you change one section that it will change as you change one dimension horizontal that the vertical will also automatically um, change its proportion or change in proportion to that so right now cancel that where are we now um, the size of the graphics still 853 by 388 let's change this down to 425 let's just say we want to do it now I could just click the image here as you saw and then change the settings but if I do that then the canvas doesn't change so we just change the full image size and that'll change the canvas as well so 425 and apparently that's 193 pixels click OK now as you can see the graphic and everything in the graphic got smaller so now we're getting somewhere now we got a little graphic we can throw up on our page and let's see the size on that to do that you click preview and that'll take you over here to this page the next one over is two up which gives you this is we're gonna do this in a second when we get to the optimization but um, that is the basics of dealing with the actual size of the graphic which as you can see has cut down the load time considerably from a hundred and what was it 32 seconds or something like that now it's down to 12 seconds so you just shave two minutes off your time grandma can finally see your site um, next thing though is this the file type is the next way that you can bring this down sometimes now the file type and file compression level are kind of tied together because the file type basically is telling um, the uh, computer or the server how this graphic like how to unload this graphic because it's going to be compacted it's called compression so basically all the little bits that make up this image are compressed and then they're decompressed so you can see the image okay now the compression level is either going to be lossy or it's going to be no loss now obviously that sounds like okay loss or no loss well obviously I want no loss right sometimes most of the time you want to get as little loss as possible but loss is acceptable when it comes to load times and graphic size and optimization on the web because you're not going to see everything that gets lost typically it's about the view and the interaction that you have with the picture especially when you're dealing with graphics it's about the view it's about how it looks to you how do you want it to look on your page that's going to be the main determinant 
of how much loss you're going to tolerate in your images. Now, when you're dealing with pictures, the best that or the the primary um, file type and compression level you're going to be dealing with or file type is going to be a JPEG. If you're dealing with regular graphics, like say you built a banner for your website, typically you're going to use you could use a JPEG if it's smaller and it gives you the look you want. But typically you'll probably use a GIF. Um, now, by default, if you created your image in um, fireworks it's going to give you a dot png unless you state it other ways otherwise down here it's going to give you a dot png now the portable network graphic is great it's lightweight it's versatile but it can get big because that's the file basically that you uh, you're going to add all the different elements to so when you have a dot png graphic if you let's say you throw in 20 or 30 gra images into that graphic well that PNG is going to house all 20 or 30 of those images in there similar to like how a PSD does and so when you go to render it it's going to be like it can be a huge file now obviously we can do optimization to change that but typically you wouldn't upload a PNG to your website you'd upload either a JPEG or a GIF those are the two main ones you're going to deal with now in fireworks they make it very easy for you to optimize your graphics as I showed you little computer guy over here now we're gonna go two up well let's go four up on this graphic so you can see what what options are available now this is the JPEG as I said this is an image um, this is gonna be your best option this here tells you the quality and so we're gonna go over here and you can adjust the quality of your graphic just by going up or down on the little bar and you can decide if the load time and the loss that you're going to suffer by going up and down on the little bar and improving or decreasing the quality is worth it to you. Now, as you can see, at 33, now you're starting to experience some severe loss in the graphic. That sucks. And that's not going to create a great experience for your user. Um, as you can see over here, the 99 is a crystal clear, and this one is slightly lesser slightly lesser um, but I think we can do better than that now as you can see the quality and the load time look how much that went down at 99 it was a 77 here at 72 quality it's 13 okay and uh, we can get that I think we can do better as far as the quality but this is pretty good for a graphic this size now over here this little button here if you click that it drops down it gives you all the options that you can choose like I said the main ones you're gonna want to use are gonna be your GIFs and your JPEGs when you go to export this document or this graphic for use on the web now let's see what a GIF looks like let's see what the GIF does now I usually use GIFs like I said if I'm building a banner and it's high graphics um, but not necessarily as you can see here what it's doing to the image it's the distortion now if you just have basic colors and not a lot of detail then gifts are great otherwise if you have high detail like this like th those you can see every shade as it changes on the spectrum going back you can see all that well that sucks that's not going to create a good experience for your users so I would not use a gif on this particular one um, for that reason even if we pump up the colors because there's different options here let's try a web adaptive version it's still not giving me the look I want um, okay next is let's see can we oh there's a PNG so we, let's look at the actual PNG and um, now you can see the gra graphic has changed or the um, the document type has changed there and you can still see all of that loss and that's what I was telling you when you're using a an image you definitely want to go with this JPEG now 99 quality is a little bit too much but here's a PNG and as you can see it just sucks that's that's not a good experience unless that's really what the clouds look like which it's not as you can see there's a clear smooth transition from front to back that's what a nice camera will do for you and also what a JPEG does that's its specialty 
uh, pictures. So I think we're going to go with a, with a JPEG just so I can get through this tutorial. And I'm going to show you, let's move the quality down a little bit. Let's see how that looks. What is that? I like that. 80 is good. Typically 80 is going to give you um, a fair give and take relationship. Now that you've decided how you want to display the graphic, you've gotten it shrunken down, you've chosen your file type, you've chosen your 